guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about one of the worst writing struggles I have ever had to wrestle with, plotter's block. Now for me, writer's block comes in five different kinds of categories. Character block, plotter's block, writing block, editing block and publishing block. And in time I'm going to talk about all of those but today I'm going to jump the one hurdle at a time and start talking about plotter's block. So without further ado, let's do this. Hi guys, so the reason I'm wearing something different is because when it came to editing the video I realised I left out something really 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 big so stay tuned to the end of the video for a really exciting announcement. Now back to the video! So plotter's block is something that I have wrestled with for years, absolute years, not knowing where you want your story to go, not knowing how you want to fill out your chapters. You know that something has to happen in these three chapters, you can't just leave them blank. And timeline wise you can't just delete them, but you have no idea what you're going to use to fill up this space or this time. And there are so many things that you can do to try and break this plotter's block, but it is something that over time you will develop the tools to do. But that is why I highly recommend chapter plotting or uh, some kind of detailed plotting so that when you are sat down and writing a book you don't have to think about what you want to happen, you can focus on the task at hand which is writing a fluid novel that people want to read and it sort of takes a few things off the plate, the pressure is relieved a little bit. So if you chapter plot like I do, one of the things that I do is I will skip the chapters I'm unsure about how to fill. Sometimes if I know where my beginning is, my end is, it's a little bit easier to sort of pyramid your way into the middle and sort of fill it out from the edges. But you can get inspiration for lots of places if you move on, I can get inspiration about from characters or other characters or other plots that are going on. Um, there are also lots of other places you can get inspiration. You can get inspiration from mood boards, Pinterest, Google, YouTube, other books, but be careful about copyright obviously. But the thing that I use when I get stuck, first of all, is the acronym AERO, A-E-R-R-O. -R -R it stands for Action, Effect, Reaction, Reader and Overall. Now I've talked about actions before, they can be big or small, so big like illness, explosions, attacks, major actions that affect the course of the novel. But there can also be small ones like important conversations, realisations and small betrayals. So there are lots of different actions that can happen inside your book. So you don't have to have a fresh action in each and every chapter, but each of your actions in previous chapters will have an effect. So think about how they will transpire later on. Maybe there will be some time passed before the effect will actually happen and you see the reactions from everybody else. Actions that have happened in chapter 2, chapter 3, the effect of which might not be seen till chapter 6 or chapter 7, as long as it makes logical sense. So think about each and every action that goes on in your book and think about the time scale, the likely time scale, for the effect to be seen in your book by the other characters. Will it change decisions? Will it change mood? Will it affect where the plot goes? Will it affect how characters interact? So think about all of the different effects that actions previously, even if you haven't got a new one for this chapter yet, might have in this chapter. So R is for reaction. Then we're talking about the reaction of the other characters. So let's say for example that you have one character in the group, character A, who has been self-medicating themselves for some reason, but hasn't told the others in the group. Maybe character B could come across this and discover this. How is character B going to react? Are they going to be kind? Are they going to be harsh? Are they going to feel guilty about keeping the secret? Is it a big thing? Is it a small thing? Is it a personal thing? Is it going to build a relationship? Is it going to tear it apart? So think about how different characters are going to react to different actions and different discoveries that they might make throughout the book. Say at the end of the last chapter you managed to escape an adversary. Well, the beginning of this chapter could be you opening up with your group of people and it's their reaction to what just happened, discussing plans to prevent it from happening again, discussing what happened, why it happened and trying to figure out what's going on. Your character's reaction to previous actions and previous effects could be very very interesting and a great source of material for your book if you're struggling of what to think about. It's also very important for your characters to react to the action and effects that are going on around them. Your characters are not stone walls, they are going to see things that's going to throw them, they're going to be scared, they might be shaken, they might be angry or hurt. Making sure that they're not stone walls and they do have believable, personable reactions is very important for making sure that your story is engaging for your readers. Which brings us on to the second R, which is your reader. Now, I've said it many times before, and I will probably repeat myself over and over and over again, but I think it's really important in your plotting stage to think about your reader. Because once you've done it in the plotting stage, that's another thing you don't have to think about as much when you're writing your first draft. Because you know you've got the bones of what will engage your reader already on the page. You've already thought about that. Now, when thinking about your reader, you should think about what does my reader want and what will engage my reader. And those things might not be the same. Your reader should be rooting for your main character. 
character and engaging them might mean putting something in the way it might be completely surprising them or turning the tables or having something very extreme turned around now i've talked before about having unexpected things happen have things that are expected small things big things and thinking through their consequences but thinking through your reader can actually i find be a really really useful tool if you're not sure what's going to happen in this chapter and it doesn't have to be something to do with the main plot maybe your reader is rooting for a romance between two sub characters maybe give them a little flavor that that might happen or maybe do the opposite and make them want it even more i think quite carefully and quite cleverly about how to play with your reader's emotions and it could be quite fun and make your book far more engaging to do so don't be afraid to pull on some heartstrings. If you think your reader is rooting for, say, a sick dog to get better, have an emotional scene between the dog and the owner. Nothing has to change, but pulling on emotions and heartstrings could be a really good way to keep your reader engaged and it's something that will enhance your book for your reader. And the last one you can think about is overall. Think about overall what you want to happen. Maybe there are some sub arcs and now would be a great time to initiate them. Maybe two characters haven't bonded much yet and this is a great time for the characters to start building that relationship. Whatever you want to happen further in your book, think about when is a good time to trigger it, when are good times to put things in the way, take things out, and think about overall what you want to happen later down the road as well. Of course, overall, it depends where you want your characters to be and what your book demands, but think about where you want your characters to be emotionally as well as physically in the future and start building towards that. If you're struggling for inspiration, Aero hasn't worked, worksheets don't work, uh, changing perspective, looking from villain's point of view, whatever it is that you've tried, none of it's working, then just take time. Sometimes these things do take time, particularly if you're new to writing. Be kind to yourself in this writing process. It's really difficult to be creative when you're not in a relaxed frame of mind. Creative ideas, ingenious idea and inspiration won't come to you if you're feeling stressed or anxious about getting this done. Also, time shouldn't be a stress factor when you're trying to plot. I don't think that putting time constraints on plotting is a good idea is a productive idea because it does get you stressed out and not in a relaxed place of mind remember this is supposed to be fun putting time constraints on maybe writing the first draft or things after that could be quite interesting because it can keep you productive but i think plotting when you're in such early stages having time expectations is really unhelpful and you want to make sure that your book is quality and sometimes quality just takes time so just breathe and relax and inspiration will hit you and it'll be really odd where it comes from. The number of times I've been in a chemistry lecture and suddenly had to scribble something down in the corner of my page because inspiration has struck out of completely nowhere happens all the time. So don't worry, just keep something on you where you can write it down and you never know. Okay guys, so time for the big announcement. The big announcement is, is that I am publishing my third novel. That's right, the Undercover Thief series is getting a third edition. It is called Thief Under Fire and will be on sale on the 1st of December. I hope you guys are ex as excited as I am because I am over the moon thrilled and I hope you guys will enjoy it. So yeah, that is my big news. And that's all for me this week. Please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up if you've liked this video. There are more writing videos coming every week and I hope you will enjoy those too. I'm not sure what I'm going to be talking about next week, probably about the importance of thinking about publishing whilst you're plotting your book. I know that might seem a little bit strange but I, t I promise it's really important to think about. Remember if you've got any questions put them in the comment section or hit me up on any of my social media platforms and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you all have wonderful, amazing weeks and I'm sure inspiration will hit soon. Until next time, bye!